Okay, last time we talked about different kinds of collisions, with the two primary types being elastic and inelastic. Okay, now perfectly inelastic is just a subcategory of inelastic. So, two main types, elastic or inelastic. And so if two objects go apart after a collision, okay, they bounce off of each other, does that mean the collision is elastic? And the answer to that is an enthusiastic no. The collision could be elastic or inelastic. All we know from this, moving apart after the collision, this tells us it is not perfectly inelastic. But it still might be inelastic. Okay, so if bouncing apart doesn't tell you whether it's elastic or inelastic, then how can you tell what kind of collision you have? And what you need to do is look at the mechanical energy. And so we, we can do that calculation by looking at the kinetic energy. You can say, is kinetic energy conserved? If kinetic energy is conserved, then we say it is elastic. And if it's not, then it's inelastic. And it doesn't matter if they stick together or not. If kinetic energy is not conserved, it is an inelastic collision. All right. In which of the three, well, I'm not sure. We can, you know, kind of say they're, they're three. Really, it's like one and two and then two star. Okay, because it's just a subtype. In which of the three types of collisions is momentum conserved? And the answer is all of them. In which of the three types of collisions is mechanical energy conserved? And the answer to that is only elastic. Okay, now let's move on and do a problem. We have a five gram bullet that is moving along at 300 meters per second. It embeds into a 500 gram target that is moving away at 5 meters per second. And the common speed of the bullet and target after impact is 7.92 meters per second. And you may remember this problem. This is one of the ones we did previously in a prior video. What is the change in kinetic energy during the collision? So we need to find out the kinetic energy before the collision and find out the kinetic energy after the collision and see how much it changed. And based on that, we can then determine if it's elastic or inelastic. All right, so before the collision, we can simply say kinetic energy for the collision is equal to one half m one times V1I squared plus one-half M2V2I squared. And that is equal to 0 0.005 kilograms for the bullet. Okay, when well, we're doing conservation of momentum, we don't necessarily have to convert from grams into kilograms. But if we're doing kinetic energy uh, to get a reasonable unit, it really helps to convert from grams into kilograms, and then we can get our unit of energy as being a joule. Without doing that, then it becomes, you know, th then we have to take time to think about what unit it's going to be in, and I think it's just easier to do it this way. And so the bullet was traveling at three, 300 meters per second, and we've got our target that was moving at five meters per second. And here we don't even need to worry too much about the direction, although both of these are positive values, but it wouldn't even matter if one of them was a negative value or if both of them were negative values because you're squaring them. 
so it's not going to make a difference. All right, and we plug this all into our calculator, and we get 231.25 joules. And now we're going to calculate the kinetic energy after the collision. So one half m1 plus m2 times v final squared. Notice I added them together. You, you could just do them separate like I did in the initial, but the two things are stuck together. So there's really only one thing afterward. And so one half times 0 0.505 kilograms times 7.92 meters per second squared. And so we get 15 0.838 joules and so we look and we can see there was this much energy before and this much energy after and so energy kinetic energy was definitely lost from the system not from the universe but lost from the system so 15.838 joules minus 231.25 joules and that ends up with a negative number 215 joules we can round it off there and so what does this mean well since a huge amount of energy was lost relatively speaking i would venture to say that was something like 90 percent 95 percent of the energy was lost it's definitely not elastic and then our choices are perfectly inelastic or inelastic and honestly we didn't have to do any calculations to know that it's perfectly inelastic because the bullet was embedded in and so it's a perfectly inelastic collision. So momentum is conserved. We know that because momentum is conserved in all collisions as long as the net force acting on the system is zero and kinetic energy not conserved and we also know that they stick together and so that allows us to figure that out all right on to the next one we have a five gram bullet traveling at 300 meters per second and it hits that same target the target is stationary this time the bullet bounces off straight back along the original direction and the bullet's going 150 meters per second after the collision. The block's moving forward now at 4.5 meters per second. And so we can do this. And, and you can go back through your notes or back through these videos, and you'll see that we did this problem previously as well. All right, so the kinetic energy initial equals 1 half m. Well, well, you know what? Let's just go ahead and plug in the numbers. I already showed you how to do the equation, so we'll go ahead and put in the mass. 0 0.005 kilograms times 300 meters per second quantity squared. Make sure you get those parentheses. We don't want to just square the seconds. Plus 0. Station, the target was stationary. And so the amount of energy there before the collision, 225 joules after the collision we have two separate things the bullet is traveling at 150 meters per second and the target tells us is traveling at 4.5 meters per second now we didn't have to solve for any of the velocities here but that's because we we did so previously in a previous problem again we solved for this 4.5 meters per second and so we get a value here of 61.3 joules and so we can see that it's not going to be elastic because we have a lot of energy loss the change in kinetic energy always final minus initial 61.3 minus 225 and so it's a negative value, negative 163.7 joules. So we lost a lot of energy, maybe something like 80%. Um, we know it's not perfectly inelastic, 
because the bullet bounced off and so we're left concluding that it's inelastic because kinetic energy was not conserved but they did not stick together Okay, so remember, when I'm saying that kinetic energy is not conserved, that's within the system. The energy of the universe is still conserved. All that's happening is that some of that energy is turning into thermal energy, sound energy, something like that. All right, let's look at another case. Here we have a... I think this one's mislabeled. This is supposed to say number 17, but it says 16 again. Um, but in any case, you can see it's a different problem. It starts off pretty similar. Uh, the bullet even bounces back with the same speed, but the block is moving forward with a speed of 26 meters per second. And so we look at the kinetic energy initial, and that is 225 joules. Let's see, last problem. And kinetic energy final is one half times 0 0.005 kilograms times 150 meters per second quantity squared. That's the same as in the last problem actually. And then we add to that we're going to add to that the Target's energy square that and now we can do this calculation all right and this comes out to 225 joules and I did check and this problem number actually is correct it is supposed to be 16 so 225 joules and so we can see that energy is conserved and so it's elastic, so momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. All right, and so there you saw where we had 15 and 16, where it was a bullet bouncing off of a stationary target. And remember, just because the bullet bounces off, that does not mean it's elastic. In one of the cases where it bounced off, it was inelastic. And in one of the cases where it bounced off, it was elastic. And the much more likely scenario to happen in real life is inelastic. Inelastic collisions are much more prevalent. Okay? And then within the inelastic category, some of the collisions are perfectly inelastic, as we saw here in problem 14. All right, that's all for this time. And we'll pick up and do a couple more problems to finish out our momentum unit.